Hello, this is Mr. Bean, and today we're going to talk about implicit differentiation. And before we can talk about taking a derivative of an implicit equation, you actually probably should understand what in the world an implicit equation is. So what we're used to is explicit equations, where we, not like bad word equations, where when we solve for y, if you get y by itself, that's considered explicit. That's what we usually plug into a calculator. We have y1 equals and y2 equals. Those are all explicit equations. But you have other types of graphs and equations in which we don't have y isolated. This would be an example of a circle with a radius of 4 because x squared plus y squared, if you remember back from our conic section days, we will have to be able to take the derivative of an equation like this. It still helps us understand the same thing. If you take the derivative of this, that gives you the slope. If we choose any random point, like right there, and you take the slope of the tangent line, that's going to be negative slope. So if you could figure out the derivative, plug in the coordinate point, you get the slope on the graph at that exact point. So let me show you why being able to do it with uh, implicit differentiation is so important. Let's try to do this explicitly, not the way we're going to do it in this lesson. So I'm going to fast forward this so you don't have to watch me do this whole thing. First we get y by itself. Okay, y is by itself. Now we actually have a plus or minus because we took the square root. So it's really like we have two equations. We have y equals square root of 5x cubed minus 3x. And we have y equals negative, same thing. So to take the derivative, now we're going to take the derivative of both of these equations, and you get this monster mess of these two things. All right, that's fine and dandy, but the problem is when we are wanting to find the slope at a point, you got to plug in the x. This is just a mess of a thing to work with, and besides that, taking the derivative was kind of tough. So the reason we want implicit differentiation is because when it's hard to solve for y. It's it's difficult to get y by itself, or when we get y by itself, taking the derivative is just a lot like, harder than it would have been if we had done implicitly, then we want to use implicit differentiation. Let me just show you how this works. So here's an example with some step-by-step -step guidance of how this is done. y squared plus 3x equals 5x cubed. So yes, we could get y by itself, but let's not do that. We're going to do implicit. So take the derivative normally. So this y squared, if you take the derivative, you get 2y. Each time a y is involved, we're also going to tag on a dy dx. Plus, now we do the next term, the derivative of 3x is 3 equals the derivative of 5x cubed is 15x squared. Okay, so we're going to take the derivative, just use power rule, blah, blah, and anytime you see a y, you're also going to tag on a dy dx right next to it. Step number two, let's gather all the terms that have a dy dx on one side and everything else on the other side. So that will leave us with 2y dy dx equals 15x squared uh, minus 3. We subtract 3 from both sides. Factor out the dy dx if necessary to create only one dy dx term. All right, that doesn't make sense for this example. We'll see that in future examples, but that, I put that step in there to help remind us. And then we're going to get dy dx by itself. So we'll divide both sides by 2y in this example, and we end up with 15x squared minus 3 over 2y. And if you can factor anything out and cancel, you would do that at this point. But that is now the derivative. 15x squared minus 3 over 2 why? How do we get the slope of the tangent line? In this example, the differential equation, which is what this is called, a differential equation, the derivative, you would need an x and a y value to be able to plug into this x and y. So you need an entire coordinate point, not just the x value, to know the slope of the tangent line. Let's do another example, and this time I'll have that step three in there where we're going to factor something out. Okay, so taking the derivative, we get 3y squared. Now we had a y involved, so we're going to multiply it by a dy dx. And this is actually, this weird step here is actually the chain rule. Let me show you. I'm going to write this one time in this entire lesson. So this derivative of 2x is just 2, right? Well, you could also think of this as, because there was an x involved, the derivative of x with respect to x equals, see, but you don't need that because dx over dx, that's just going to be the 1. So again, I could do this here, 
equals 4x cubed. And since we had an x involved, I could do dx over dx, the derivative of x with respect to x, plus 2, the derivative of 2y is 2, and then derivative of y with respect to x. Let's make this smaller. Good. And again, I'm never going to do this again on any other examples. I just wanted you to see that we're really using this uh, weird chain rule thing on every single term, but when it's an x and we're doing it with respect to x, there's no reason to include this portion, these little weird fractions. Okay, so let's clean this up. We are now going, let's go back to our steps, gather all the terms with dy dx onto one side. I said left side, but it doesn't have to be left side. So uh, this is going to be gone. Let's just, this is confusing me. So dx, that's just a 1. dx over dx is a 1. So all I have then is these, this term here and this term here. So I have 3y squared dy dx. And where's the other one? Right here, let's subtract this one over. So minus 2 dy dx equals this one is still here, 4x cubed. And then this one I'm going to add 2 to both sides to bring it over here to the right. Okay, now we'll do step 3, where you look and see all the terms with a dy dx are on one side. I will factor out a dy dx. I'm left with 3y squared minus 2 equals 4x cubed plus 2. And now that dy dx has one little term here, you can. this is multiplication, so you divide both sides to get our answer. dy dx equals 4x cubed plus 2 over 3y squared minus 2. And again, if we wanted to know what the slope of the tangent line was, in order to get that, this differential equation, this is what that is called, a differential equation, needs an x and a y value in order for us to get that slope. Now, let me make a comment about something real quick. On some problems, it might be faster for you to use y prime. Instead of having to write out dy over dx, it's smaller and a little bit easier to write and it can be faster for you to solve these problems. Here is the issue. Some of my students, and you know who you are, are very sloppy with their writing. I mean, even sloppier than me. Look how bad this is. You, so, so if you were all over the place on your writing, then you don't want to write y prime. Okay, let me make it real clear because here's why. If you every time you see a dy dx, if you had written a y prime instead, a y prime instead, it is so easy to get confused with y squared and y prime. You know, if I had y times y prime, or maybe y squared times y prime, it's easy to lose track of this y prime. So you got to be really careful. So we'll do example number three with the y prime. I'm going to have you pause and try it on your own in just a second. And some of my solutions, I'm going to try and rotate which ones I use. Sometimes I'll use dy dx, and sometimes I'll use y prime. They mean the same thing. The problem is that if you only use y prime, you don't have this very important dx part. And the, with respect to x helps us understand what variable we're taking the derivative with respect to, which may not make much sense right now. But in our next lesson, we're going to take the derivative with respect to time and the derivative with respect to the radius and all sorts of different things. And so that's why it is a little important for us to use this notation sometimes. But for this lesson, you can use both. All right, try number three. Pause this video now. Try this one on your own, and I will have the answer appear. But don't forget to use hint, 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 product rule. Okay, here's our answer. I put uh, the negative here, I factored out of the numerator, so you're just going to have a 6x plus 4y squared all over 8xy minus 15y squared. I even made it a little easier for you by making the y prime in blue, a different color so you could kind of visually keep track of it. That's where we would normally put a dy dx, uh, just kind of depending if you want to use that, that is okay for this lesson. Um, what else do I want to talk about about this one? Oh yeah. Do not do this common mistake. Okay, this is like an Algebra 1 freshman mistake. Please don't do this. Y squared cancel. Don't do that. Or 6 over 8 reduces. Don't do that. Okay, this is fraction. The entire numerator is together. You can only uh, cancel like that if it's separated by multiplication and division. I just thought I should remind you real quick because I keep saying that mistake. Okay, now let's get an equation of a tangent line. Find the equation. So what are the things we need? For an equation of a tangent line, we need slope, 
we need an x value and we need a y value. Those are the three things. And then we can just plug it into y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. That's what we're looking for, these three things. So there's the x, so we've got that, x equals 1. m is going to be the derivative because that's the slope. And a y, well, how are we going to get the y value? Um, the y values, if you look here, so here's where x equals 1. The y values are going to be right there on the circle and right there on the circle, straight up and down. It's x equals 1 something. So let's go ahead and plug the 1 in to the x. We get 1 squared plus y squared equals 4, y squared equals 3. So what is the y? y is going to equal plus or minus the square root of 3. So there's my two coordinate points. So we actually are going to have, find the equations, I could have put in parentheses s because there's more than one equation of a tangent line for these two. All right, now all we need is the slope. So let's do it. Change colors here. So we'll take the derivative of this thing. So the derivative is 2x plus 2y dy dx equals 0. Uh, because derivative of 4 is a constant, it's 0. And then just don't forget the dy dx I tagged on. Let's solve for dy dx. 2y dy dx equals negative 2x. Divide both sides by 2y. dy dx equals negative 2x over 2y. And then that simplifies to just dy dx equals negative x over y. Okay, so we're going to have two equations. Let's write them out. My first equation, y minus, what's one of the y values? Let's do positive square root of 3. So I have y minus square root of 3 equals, now I need my slope. What is the slope? So I'm going to plug in the coordinate point negative, plug in the coordinate point 1 over and then the y value was a square root of 3. So it's going to be negative 1 over square root of 3. That is the slope. Now I could rationalize that and that becomes, uh, this would equal negative square root of 3 over 3. It just depends on the multiple choice problem, which one they would have. So you just have to be careful about that. I'll go ahead and leave it unrationalized this time. So we are going to have the slope is negative 1 over square root of 3. And then what is the rest of this? It's x minus 1. There, right here, is one of the equations of the tangent line. Okay, so that's for this one. Right there. Let's do the other one. The other equation is going to be, uh, I'll write down here because I'm running out of room, y plus the square root of 3, because now we're doing, that. we did the plus or minus, and so now I'm doing the negative one. I'm going to do this point right here equals, so now if we plug this one in, you can see the only difference is that we're plugging in a negative square root of 3. So now this is going to become negative and a negative, so that makes it 1 over square root of 3, and the whole thing is positive, and then x minus 1. It's the same x value. So there is the other equation with positive slope, and pshoo, there's the tangent line. So you can see it's the same concept. Everything we've been doing, the derivative represents slope of a tangent line. It's just this extra added craziness of implicit differentiation. Now for the last problem. This one, we're going to take the second derivative, but we're going to use implicit differentiation to do it. So let's rem remember just real quick, when we take the first derivative, we're doing something with respect to x. When we take the second derivative, we're going to take the derivative of this first derivative, and again with respect to x. So the notation is going to be, and I should have probably said, write this maybe on the side of your notes, not right underneath here, because I'm going to use this space for something else. Uh, so this is maybe in the margin there. So the derivative then is going to be, for the second derivative, I should say, the second derivative's notation is d squared dx squared. This is how we write the second derivative for implicit differentiation. Uh, it's the same thing as just saying y double prime. These two things are equivalent. Okay, let me get rid of that to save myself some space. So let's go ahead and take this derivative uh, with implicit differentiation. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine y, and then we times it by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of y 
is dy dx equals, and then this derivative is just 4x, real simple here. Okay, now solve for dy dx, and we get that dy dx equals 4x over negative sine y. And I could have just put this negative in front there. I'm going to leave it there with the negative sign for now. Okay, so now we'll take the second derivative. Uh, I'm going to start back up here. The second derivative then uh, is, if I take the derivative of this thing, dy dx becomes d squared y over dx squared. So that's the derivative of the left side. And it's going to equal, okay, so now I take the derivative of this thing. But I've got to use quotient rule since I have a variable on top and bottom of this fraction. So let's do quotient rule. So the derivative of the first, so I've got this large fraction. So the derivative of the first here, the derivative of the top is 4. And then we leave the bottom alone. So I'm not going to write anything there except just whatever the denominator is, negative sine y minus. Now I leave this one alone, and I get 4x times, now I'll take the derivative of this one. So the derivative of negative sine y is just negative cosine y times the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of y is, i got to squeeze this in here, dy dx. And that's all over this negative sine y being squared. Okay, can I clean this up a little bit? I'm going to clean this fraction up. So that I get, this becomes negative 4 sine y plus 4x cosine y over dy dx. And then on bottom, this, because it's being squared, the negative goes away, and it's just sine squared y. Okay, so uh, now what do you do? So every time you're taking the second derivative with implicit differentiation, you're, you're almost always going to end up with this dy dx thing. So I'm, I'm trying to say that the second derivative of y with respect to x being squared, I need to substitute this dy dx since I already know what it equals, and it equals this. I just plug that whole thing into dy dx, and then simplify, and you're done. So let's plug it in and see what we get. OK, so this is the answer not simplified. And the struggle with this is, what would be the simplified answer? There are so many combinations you could do. We could split this fraction up and have it 4 sine y over sine squared, cancel on a sine, make it 1 over sine, which is cosecant. You could come over here and get cosine over sine is cotangent. Um, or you could do multiply this by 1 over sine squared, get some things. I, I mean, there's so many different possibilities. So let me, uh, let's just do it like this. Um, I will say the answer here is negative 4 sine y. Uh, plus, no, minus. Minus because of this thing right here, that little negative. It's going to bring it to the front and make this become a minus. Uh, so then I have 16x squared. Uh, now I'm going to have, oh, I forgot. I was a little lazy there. I forgot. To, sorry, this is supposed to be cosine y. Little typo. Sorry, that's supposed to be cosine y, not cosine of this. That's a totally different problem. Sorry. So then I have uh, cosine of y over sine y. Well, cosine of y over sine y is cotangent y. And then that is all over sine squared y. So again, there are many variations of how I could write the answer to this. And the only way you're going to know which one to do is if it was a multiple choice problem and you would see the answers there. You'd have to manipulate this until you get one of the answers of multiple choice. OK, so that's it. Again, the big thing on second derivative is once you have this dy dx, you plug in from your first step what that first derivative is into dy dx. OK, we're going to use this a ton on our next lesson when we do stuff with related rates. So make sure you get this down. Rock that mastery check, and I'll see you back in the next lesson.